Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Matt Kidd School and Library Virtual Fall 2020 Preview. My name is Melissa Kirchie, and I'm a part of the School and Library team here at Macmillan Children's. Thank you so much for joining us. We've missed seeing so many of you in person this year, whether it was at any of our in-house previews or at a conference, but whether we're in person or online, the excitement we feel for our upcoming titles remains the same, which is to say very high. Now I'd like to have my school and library colleagues introduce themselves. You'll be hearing from all of us today. Hi everyone, Lucy Del Piori here. Thank you for joining us. Hi everyone, it's Katie Halata. I'm glad to be with you all virtually. Hi, Kristen Luby. Glad everyone could meet us today. Thanks for joining. Hi, Sierra Bland. So happy you all could join us today. Great. All right. So some important housekeeping before we get started. I wanted to let everybody know that at Macmillan, we expect all participants to maintain an atmosphere of respect and fairness. Anyone who violates this standard of behavior, including engaging in any form of harassment, may, at the discretion of the organizers, be immediately removed. I don't think I have to worry about this group, but it never hurts to tell everyone to be respectful and kind. So before you hear about some upcoming um, titles, I'd like to introduce our special guest for today, author Mike Gerardo. Mike is the author and illustrator of the Little Elliot series and has illustrated a number of other books for, for children, including Worm Loves Worm. Today, he will be talking to you about his upcoming and first graphic novel, Flamer. Take it away, Mike. Thanks, Melissa. Hi, everybody. Uh, so nice to uh, be here today. Um, so you may know me from uh, my books uh, featuring Little Elliot, um, Polka Dotted Elephant, and that is for um, the little ones, uh, but now I have a brand new book out uh, in September, September 1st, called Flamer, and it is a young adult graphic novel. Um, it's very close to my heart. Um, it's the story of a teenage boy who's um, half Filipino, half white, and a little bit chubby. And he is away at a scout camp the summer before his first year of high school. Um, and he is navigating friendships and bullies. Uh, he's dealing with racism and body image, all while confronting his uh, sexual identity. Um, and this is a really important book to me not only because um, this was the book that I wish I had as a kid, because I never saw myself in books. I never saw myself on the screen. Um, and I was bullied relentlessly. And, you know, after a while of that, one thinks, you know, maybe I'm not supposed to be here. Um, but spoiler alert, Aiden, Aiden has to make some tough choices, but, um, gets himself on a path of, of self-discovery and acceptance. Um, and I think it's really important uh, to share different stories like these, um, not just so that kids who can relate with this character can see themselves and uh, feel valued and feel like they're supposed to be a part of this world, but also for people who don't have that experience to be able to understand what it's like being a person like Aiden. Um, so I'm so excited uh, for you all to read it. I can't wait for September. It can't come soon enough. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it. And thanks so much uh, to Macmillan for helping me put this book in the world. And um, I hope you all enjoy the preview. I'm going to stick around for a little bit because I want to see what else is coming out to you. So, <laughs> um, back to Melissa. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. That was really great. Um, please, if you have not been looking in the chat, um, we've included all of Mike's info. So if you want to keep up with everything that he's doing, follow him on Twitter, his website. He will also be participating in a graphic novel panel tomorrow with Booklist at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We put in the registration link. So if you love Mike, if you love graphic novels, you should 
you should be there tomorrow. So thanks so much, Mike. I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentation. You can thanks. see what's happening. Fun. All, all right. Going forward, first up for what we're YA, we for any historical thriller fans out there, this is Traitor by Amanda Makrina. So Poland, 1944. After the Soviet liberation of Lvov from Germany, the city remains a battleground between resistance fighters and insurgent armies, its loyalties torn between Poland and the Ukraine. 17-year-old Tolia is half Ukrainian, half Polish, and he's joined the Soviet Red Army to keep himself alive and fed. When he not quite accidentally shoots his unit's political officer in the street, yikes, he is rescued by a squad of Ukrainian freedom fighters. They might have saved him, but Tolia does not trust them at all. He especially doesn't trust Solovey, the squad's war scarred young leader. Then a betrayal sends them both on the run. And in a city where loyalty comes second to self preservation, a traitor can be an enemy or a savior, or sometimes both. Up next, we have Kind of a Big Deal by Shannon Hale. As we all know, the only thing worse than high school itself is peaking in high school, and nobody knows that better than Josie Pye. She was kind of a big deal. She dropped out of high school after all to become a Broadway star, but the bigger you are, the harder you fall, and Josie fell hard. Her entire life, in fact, keeps imploding. Her Broadway dream is dead. Her best friend is distant, and her boyfriend is quote-unquote busy. Desperate to escape, Josie gets into reading literally. She reads a book and suddenly she's inside it. And with each book, she's a different character. She's a post-apocalyptic heroine, the lead in a Y rom-com, a 17th century wench in a corset. It's alarming, but also kind of amazing. She's living out all of the dreams that she couldn't in real life. However, the longer she stays in a story, the harder it becomes to escape. Will Josie find a story that's so good that she just stays forever? All right, if this next book isn't already on your radar, I am so happy to put it there for you. Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas is an epic LGBTQ plus magical realism adventure where Coco meets the Raven cycle. Fans of Anna Marie McLemore, and everyone should be a fan of Anna Marie McLemore, will love this ghost story in which a trans boy, Yadriel, is determined to prove his gender identity to his traditional Latinx family who are full of brujos and brujas, or witches. To do so, he summons a ghost but not the ghost that he intends to. Said ghost is Julian, who's the hot bad boy at Yadriel school, who isn't convinced that he's dead, and in turn instead convinces Yadriel to help him figure out how he died. Yadriel reluctantly does so, even though Julian is annoying, but as time goes on, the two grow closer until Yadriel isn't so sure that he minds Julian after all. You'll have to read to find out what happens next. All right. From superstar Lady Gaga, here is Channel Kindness, Stories of Kindness and Community. Lady Gaga has always believed in the importance of being yourself, being kind to yourself, and being kind to others. With that sentiment in mind, she and her mother Cynthia founded the Born This Way Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to making the world a kinder and braver place. Throughout the years, they've collected stories of kindness, bravery, and resilience from young people all over the world. Individually and collectively, these stories prove that kindness not only saves lives, but is also transformational, and its never-ending ripples result in even more kind acts that can change our lives, our communities, and our world. All right, for something completely different, we have White Fox by Sarah Faring. You might remember Sarah. She wrote the chilling thriller The Tenth Girl, and now she's back. After their world-famous actor mother disappeared under mysterious circumstances, Manon and Thais were sent away from their remote Mediterranean home by their pharmatech tycoon father. Opposites in every way, the sisters drifted apart in their grief, yet their mother's memory still haunts them both, and they can't put to rest the possibility that she might still be alive. Lured home a decade later, Manon and Thais discover their mother's legendary last screenplay, Long Thought to be Lost, a fairy tale called White Fox. The clues in this dark fairy tale draws them in deeper into the island's surreal society and into the twisted secrets hidden by their glittery family, revealing the truth about their mother and themselves. So, Twilight is making a comeback, both because of the new book and its near perpetual internet cult status, but let's face it, fascination for vampires in general never truly dies. And both literally and in pop culture, vampires never get old. In this delicious anthology, Vampires Never Get Old, Tales with a Fresh Bite, edited by Zoraida Cordova and Natalie C. Parker, 
you'll find 11 stories that take the age-old stereotype of vampires only being white, cisgender, straight, and able-bodied and throw it right out of the coffin. Welcome to the evolution of the vampire and a revolution on the page. Can books be blockbusters like movies? I'm going to say yes, and here's one of them, Sky Hunter by Marie Lu. The Carenza Federation has conquered a dozen countries, leaving the country of Mara as one of the last free nations in the world. Refugees flee to its borders to escape a fate worse than death, transformation into mutant war beasts known as ghosts, creatures that the Federation then sends to attack countries it's trying to take over, such as Mara. The legendary strikers, Mara's elite fighting force, are trained to stop these ghosts. But as the number of ghosts grows and the Federation closes in, defeat seems inevitable. Still, one striker refuses to give up hope. Robbed of both her, robbed of both her voice and her home, refugee and striker Talon knows firsthand the brutality of the Federation. When a mysterious prisoner is brought from the front, Talon senses there's more to him than meets the eye. Is he a spy from the Federation, or could he be the weapon that will save? them all. All right. From Kenneth C. Davis, best-selling author of the Don't Know Much About Books, comes Strongman, The Rise of Five Dictators and the Fall of Democracy, a dramatic account of the origins of democracy, the history of authoritarianism, and the reigns of five of history's deadliest dictators. What makes a country fall to a dictator? How do authoritarian leaders, strongmen, capable of killing millions, acquire their power? How are they able to defeat the ideal of democracy? And what can we do to make sure it doesn't happen again? By profiling five of the most notoriously ruthless dictators in history, Kenneth C. Davis seeks to answer these questions, examining the forces in these strongmen's personal lives and historical periods that help shape the leaders they become. Meticulously researched and complete with photographs, Strongman provides insight to the lives of five leaders who callously transform the world and serves as an invaluable resource in an era when democracy itself seems in peril. Well, democracy is not the only thing in peril in This Is All Your Fault by Amina May Safi which follows three young women, Daniela, a hard-faced math lover who secretly loves to write poetry, Rin, known to her coworkers as the perfect little Miss Sunshine, and Imogen, who is just trying to keep her metaphorical and newly shaved head above water. They have absolutely nothing in common except that they all work at Wild Nights Bookstore in Emporium and they love it. But when their beloved bookstore is being unceremoniously shut down and sold off, they are determined to save it, even if it means that they have to work together. Throughout the single day they have to turn things around for wild nights, the three girls will learn about what they're capable of and what they can accomplish when they work as a team. Empire Records meets the Breakfast Club. This is all your fault is an ode to the literary community, to unlikely female friendships, and to being a part of something bigger than yourself. All right, up next we have Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. Chronic overachiever Prudence Daniels is always quick to cast judgment on the residents of her coastal town. Her dreams of karmic justice are fulfilled when, after a night out with friends, she wakes up with the sudden ability to cast instant karma on those around her. Prue giddily makes use of the power, punishing everyone from public vandals to mean gossips, but there is one person on whom her powers consistently backfire. Quint Erickson, her slow verbal lab partner. But the more Prue gets to know the annoyingly cute and kind of noble Quint, guys, he volunteers with sea animals, okay, with rescue sea animals. The more her newfound karmic insights reveal just how thin the line is between virtue and vanity, generosity and greed, and love and hate and faith is. And just FYI, in case you're wondering, this book isn't a graphic novel, but if the cover art seems familiar, it's because it was drawn by Caldecott Honoré Vera Bosco. All right, next. Here we have Sasha Masha by Agnes Bernsky. Alex feels like he's in the wrong body. His skin feels strange against his bones. And then comes Tracy, who thinks he's adorably awkward, who wants to kiss him, and who wants to make him feel like a quote-unquote real boy. But it's not quite enough. Something is missing. As Alex grapples with his identity, he finds himself trying on dresses and swiping on lipstick in the quiet of his bedroom. He meets Andre, a gay boy who is both beautiful and unafraid to be who he is. Slowly, Alex begins to realize, maybe his name isn't Alex after all. Maybe it's Sasha Masha. Hand Ruin Song by Julie Ember to the witchy reader in your life, but please, I beg you, do not let them hex the moon. In a world where magic is sung, a powerful mage named Cadence has been forced to torture her country's disgraced nobility at her ruthless queen's bidding. But when she is reunited with her childhood friend, a noble woman with ties to the underground rebellion, she must finally make a choice. Take a stand to free their country from oppression or follow in the queen's footsteps and become a monster herself. 
All right. And then lastly, we have Fault Lines in the Constitution. This is the latest volume in our World Citizen um, graphic novel series. Um, this is meant for adults, but it is you absolutely are able to use it in the classroom. Um, we started off with Unrig earlier this summer, and now we are here at the Fault Lines in the Constitution, going over how the Constitution was created, going over um, how it has manifested itself in American society and history throughout the years. And it talks about how it influences, how we can still see its influences today in modern American politics. All right, that is everything for me. I am going to turn the reins over to my colleagues, Kristen Luby and Katie Halata, who will be sharing some upcoming middle grade titles. Take it away. Hi, everyone. Excited to talk about our middle grade titles today. First is Alice's Farm um, from Mary Rose Wood, the author of the acclaimed series, The Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place. Um, comes a new, stunning new middle grade novel about a brave rabbit named Alice who lives on Prune Street Farm. When Alice hears that a developer has plans to bulldoze the farm, she hatches a plan to save her home with help from some unlikely new friends, including the farmer's son, his dog, and a majestic bald eagle. The sweet story is a celebration of friendship and bravery, and Alice is a character as classic as Wilbur the Pig that generations of readers are sure to love. School Library Journal says this is a good read aloud candidate for fans of Charlotte's Web, and Kirkus says this book is an effervescent delight. Next is The Dare Sisters. The Goonies meets book scavenger when three sisters hunt for Blackbeard's legendary treasure in this action-packed middle grade debut from Jessica Rinker. The Dare Sisters grew up hearing stories about Blackbeard from their grandfather, and it was his dream to hunt down his legendary treasure. Now that their grandfather is gone, they decide to fulfill his dream. No one else in their town believes the story of this hidden treasure except for their grandfather's mysterious old business partner, who is also determined to find it. But when their family home is in danger, the Dare Sisters realize that finding this treasure is their only hope. Next, in The Invisible Boy, Nadia is a superhero comics fan who dreams of being a real-life Lois Lane ace reporter. She's on a mission to expose her neighborhood supervillain, Kenny, who broke her canoe paddle for no reason. And if he did that, he must be up to other villainous deeds. But then Nadia meets another boy named Eli, who no one else seems to see. Soon she realizes that this invisible boy is in fact dealing with a very real and very dangerous supervillain. In the end, Nadia, Kenny, and Eli become their own superheroes when they band together to do what's right. The Invisible Boy is a gripping mystery and an adventure story, as well as a story about child labor trafficking. Because it sensitively deals with such a tough topic, this book is a great choice for book club discussions and for reader, uh, readers who gravitate towards realistic fiction. The story is interspersed with comic strip illustrations at the beginning of each chapter tied into the superhero theme of the book. You may know Remy live from her heartwarming middle grade debut, Pie in the Sky. Remy brings her sweet storytelling and fantastic illustrations to her new book, Fly on the Wall. Henry Koo feels like he's unremarkable, but he has an amazing imagination, so much so that he's created his own anonymous webcomic about his school called Fly on the Wall, which contains gossip about all his classmates, including his ex-BFF, CB. The webcomic goes viral, and Henry starts to worry that people will find out that he is the creator, even though he feels invisible at school. He's anything but invisible at home where everyone treats him like a baby. His overprotective family won't let him do anything alone, especially fly from Australia to Singapore to see his dad. So Henry hatches a plan for a top secret greatest adventure ever, flying to Singapore alone to see his dad and avoid getting caught for creating fly on the wall. With tons of humor and heart, there's so much to love about this book. Wimpy Kid fans and reluctant readers will love the highly illustrated diary format. Adventurous kids and imaginative introverts will love this story of a shy and sensitive boy asserting his independence, finding his way, and learning to speak up, even if what he has to say is difficult. You may be familiar with our next author, Master of Horror, Daniel Krauss, from his YA novels, Rotters and Scowler, and his most recent sci-fi thriller, Bent Heavens. We've seen a real demand for scary middle grade stories, and this one certainly fits the bill. The first in a new trilogy, They Threw Us Away, is about a group of teddy bears who find themselves lost in a dump. They aren't sure how they got there, but they know they need to get back to the store and find the loving arms of a child where they truly belong. 
They set out on a perilous trek through a menacing world to find their way back home. Equal parts Toy Story, The Brave Little Toaster, and Lord of the Flies, this is an unforgettable start of a captivating series with illustrations throughout by Ravina Kai. Hand this to readers who love a creepy story and fans of the Five Night at Freddy's video game series. This middle grade adventure by best-selling author Aaron Reynolds will blow you away. Sorry for that terrible pun. Fun, fans of potty humor will love Spark Quest. After their masters are vaporized in a goblin battle gone bad, three lowly apprentices decide to take their place as heroes of the realm. But they'll need more than a fancy robe, a magic staff, and a book of magical beasts to be real heroes. They need a quest. So when the great and powerful Kevin puts out a call for help, seeking the coveted golden llama and its magical golden fart, the three friends embarked on the journey they were destined for. If your young readers love fantasies full of flatulence, this is the story for them. With tons of illustrations throughout, reluctant readers will love it. Switching gears completely, as we approach Election Day 2020, Who's Right Is It Anyway breaks down an issue that grows ever relevant to families across America, the Second Amendment and our right to own guns. Young readers may have questions about this controversial topic, and this first of its kind book breaks it down in a clear and compelling way for middle grade readers. Filled with historical photos and informative graphics, the book will show young readers how, young, how gun legislation has always been part of American history and how money, power, and race have long dictated our ability to own guns. It's a fascinated and even-handed treatment of a really complex subject, making this a useful book for classrooms and community discussions. Next, in the Explorer's Code by Allison K. Hymas, three kids must unlock the clues of a mysterious mansion, a famous female explorer, and the treasure she left behind. But the adults around them are also hunting for the treasure, and these kids will have to overcome their differences and work as a team to solve riddles and codes before it's too late. Full of puzzles and intrigue, this is a delectable treat for readers watching a brain teaser or two in an intricately packaged, pack, intri intricately paced package, says Kirkus. And finally, for me, Dungeon Critters is a magical middle grade graphic novel that's part Dungeons and Dragons style quest and part classic animal adventure, perfect for fans of Redwall. Motivated by a lust for adventure and a strong moral compass, the Dungeon Critters, a tight knit squad of animal friends, embark on an action packed dungeon crawl to investigate a sinister botanical conspiracy among the furry nobility. Full of magic and mayhem, rivalries and secrets, plus colorful, vibrant art, this graphic novel is the perfect package. Thank you, Kristen. That was great. Um, Katie, it's Katie here, and I'm going to finish out the middle grade series for you guys, starting with Investigators, Take the Plunge. This is the second book in John Patrick Green's Investigator series, a pun-loving graphic novel mystery series that follows sewer-loving secret agents Mango and Brash. This time around, the headquarters for Suit, that's special undercover investigation teams for those of you not in the know, is under attack and Mango and Brash must go undercover as city sewer workers to get to the bottom of the attacks. But when their search for their arch nemesis, Crocodile, Crackerdile, backfires, this, the investigators take the blame. Now Mango and Brash will have to restore their good name and put the real cul culprit behind bars before disaster strikes. This series is laugh out loud funny and perfect for fans of Dogman. The third book in the series, Investigators Off the Hook, will publish in winter 2021. Cleo Porter and the Body Electric. This is a futuristic middle grade novel that will feel all too familiar to many readers in the wake of COVID-19. To keep themselves safe from disease, a disease that nearly wiped humans from the earth, 12-year-old Cleo Porter and her parents are sealed into their, their apartment without windows or doors. They never leave, they never get visitors, and their food is dropped off by drones. They are totally alone. Which is why it's particularly surprising when they receive a package clearly meant for someone else. As a surgeon in training, Cleo knows that the package contains life-saving medicine and that there isn't much time for the package to get to its rightful owner. Even though it's unheard of for people to leave their sealed apartments, Cleo knows she must in order to deliver the medicine on time. With the perfect blend of fantasy and reality, give this to fans of Rebecca Stead when you reach me. All right, Girl Giant and the Monkey King. 11-year-old Tom is keeping a big secret. She's strong, like very, very strong. 
and it's making it impossible for her to fit in at her new school. When she accidentally frees the Monkey King, a powerful deity and legendary trickster, they form an unlikely friendship. But when Tom pledges to help the Monkey King recover his magical staff in exchange for taking away her super strength, she's not sure if she can truly trust him. Soon she finds herself swept up in a centuries old world full of demons, dragons, and jade princesses. But she quickly discovers that magic can't cure everything. This middle grade debut is the first book in a fantasy duology packed with action, adventure, and heart. Give this one to fans of Rick Riordan and Roshni Chakshi. Chance, Escape from the Holocaust. You'll know Ori Shulevitz from his Caldecott Medal winning Fool of the World and the Flying Ship, plus his three Caldecott honor books, including How I Learned Geography, among other notable books for children. Chance is Ori's middle grade, middle grade debut, a memoir that details the eight-year journey of how he and his Jewish family escaped the terrors of the Nazis by fleeing Warsaw for the Soviet Union. This important story is a highly illustrated account of determination, courage, family loyalty, and the luck of coincidence. How to remember everything. This ultimate memory guide for kids is full of recall building techniques, fun challenges, and hilarious art. With all the memory improvements in this book, kids can study smarter and retain information like dates and history, state capitals, and the periodic table of elements better than ever before. But it's not just for kids. Anyone can benefit from a better memory for names at parties, counting cards, and where they left their keys. Examples of, and methods featured include chunking, memory palaces, and the major system. Voices of Justice. Voices of Justice, Justice introduces young readers to the groundbreaking work of activists who fought to change the world through a collection of lyrical poems, featuring several different poem profiles, including acrostic and concrete. From environmental, indigenous, civil, women's, or LGBTQ rights, the heroes of this book fought to build a better and brighter world. This timely and beautiful book includes extended bios on all the subjects, as well as select sources, a glossary of terms, and a discussion guide prepared by a child psychologist. History Comics Challenger Disaster. This is the first volume in a new nonfiction graphic non-fiction graphic novel series from First Second, designed to make history accessible to all readers, similar in style and format to sister series Science Comics. The first insta installment of the series will focus on the 1986 Challenger Space Shuttle explosion, with future installments covering topics such as the history of national parks, the Great Chicago Fire, Prohibition, and hip hop. This series is perfect for fans of Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales. Spin with me. Told in dual narrative, Essie is feeling down about starting at a new school until she meets Ollie. At first, Essie thinks she just, she just has a typical middle school crush on the cute boy at school, but she soon realizes that Ollie's not a boy or a girl, but gender non-binary. From the author of the acclaimed Gracefully Grayson comes a thoughtful and sensitive middle grade novel about non-binary identity and first love. Perfect for fans for Barbara O'Connor and Raina Telgemeier. Never After. This is the first book in a new middle grade series from the New York Times bestselling author, Melissa De La Cruz. Nothing ever happens in Philomena Jefferson Cho's small California town until one day something totally strange happens. As she's walking home, she realizes she's being followed, but what's even stranger is that the person following her is Jack Stalker, one of the heroes from the 13th fairy tale, a book series Philomena loves. At first she thinks she must be dreaming, but Jack is insistent. He's real, the stories are real, and he needs Philomena's help to save the kingdom. Soon she finds herself thrust into a world of fairies, princesses, sorcerers, and slayers, facing off with an evil queen trying to eradicate the fairies of the realm. The Never After series is the perfect blend of fairy tale, fantasy, and middle grade adventure. It's sure to captivate fans of Melissa's Descendant series and beyond. And then last up for middle grade is Mighty Justice. Uh, this is a young reader's adaptation of Mighty Justice, My Life in Civil Rights, the memoir of activist and trailblazer Dubby Johnson Roundtree. Dubby Johnson Roundtree was a trailblazing lawyer, minister, and army veteran who fought passionately for the rights of African Americans. Raised in Charlotte, North Carolina during the Jim Crow era, 
Debbie learned to face inequality early in life and always moved towards justice. Made with the full support of the Debbie Roundtree estate, this book brings her inspiring story to life. We will also publish a picture book adaptation of the adult edition in winter 2021 entitled We Wait for the Sun. And that wraps things up for middle grade and I'm gonna pass things over now to Lucy Del Piori and Sierra Bland for some of our can't miss picture books. Hi everyone, this is Sierra um, and now it's time for our picture books. Up first from the team behind Do Not Look This Book comes another hilarious picture book about the things we can't see that impact us every day. There's a skeleton inside you, takes a look inside our bodies to show us what humans are made of. This captivating interactive picture book follows two friendly aliens named Quart and Ort as they explore what makes up the human body layer by layer. Jam-packed with fun, There's a Skeleton Inside You pairs nicely with lessons about the body and early biology discussions. It's simple and gives a good overview of what makes you, well, you. Now, you may know Jorma Tacone as a member of the comedy group The Lonely Island, but he's partnered with Caldecott Medal-winning author Dan Santat for his debut picture book, Little Fox and the Wild Imagination. After a rough day at school, Little Fox looks to Papa Fox for tearing up and Papa Fox knows a wacky game of pretend is just what Little Fox needs. They become Transformer-style race cars, speeding their way toward a bus stop. A special treat turns into a rocket ship to planet ice cream. But once Little Fox imagination's been unleashed, there's no turning back. And bath time and bedtime become the ultimate battle. This dynamic duo has created a picture book about how a father's love can transcend time, space, and even giant robot squids. Next, we have Marie's Ocean by Josie James. At a time when scientific careers were largely unavailable to women, Marie Tharp paved the way and became the greatest oceanographic cartographer of the 20th century. She mapped the ocean's floor, discovered the mid-ocean ridge, and her work helped lead to the theory of plate tectonics. But it was not an easy road as she struggled as a woman to receive credit for her accomplishments. Marie's Ocean is a story of one of Earth science's greatest hidden figures. Told in a fresh mixed media format with women's history and STEM tie-ins, this picture book biography is perfect for fans of Counting on Catherine and Spring After Spring. Now, you may know Ben Hackey as the New York Times bestselling author of Zeta the Space Girl Trilogy, the Mighty Jack Trilogy, and last year's Mighty Jack and Zeta the Space Girl. Well, he's back with a new picture book, Julia's House Moves On. Julia's House is Restless. Julia and her family, lost, family of lost creatures are ready to move on, but where will they go and how will they get there? Don't worry, Julia has a plan for that. Julia always has a plan. But when Julia's plans all fail, what's left for her? Julia is a plan hatching type A personality who learns to let go in the face of total chaos. Hacky's wild fun illustrations and simple rhythmic text makes this a perfect read aloud. Next, we have the latest from Sarah Varon, author of Hold Hands, New Shoes, and many other titles that I'm sure you're all familiar with. My Pencil and Me is a playful picture book perfect for young artists, writers, and makers. Readers step into the studios to see Sarah and how she faces insecurities and overcomes creative roadblocks. Sarah loves to draw and tell stories, but sometimes it can be difficult to get started. Lucky for Sarah, she has a friend who is always by her side her pencil. With a little help from pencil, Sarah learns that it's okay if her story isn't perfect, as long as she's having fun. This smart and playful story combined with Sarah's super cute artwork is a perfect mix. My Pencil and Me is a great addition for anyone looking to stoke creativity. Arnie the Donut is back with a brand new adventure. And hello Arnie, Arnie says hello to all of his friends in the bakery. But there's one page pastry that doesn't look quite like the others. And it's you. Arnie and his pastry pals are excited to meet you, but first he has a question. What kind of donut are you anyway? This ingenious new picture book breaks the fourth wall as Arnie gets to know his youngest readers and makes them giggle with every turn. Lori Keller is the Geisel Award winning author of We Are Growing, Potato Pans, and the first Arnie the Donut book. Preschoolers will delight in this fun inter interactive book that's perfect for read alouds. Now I'm going to pass it over to Lucy, who will take it from here. Thank you, Sierra. 
We're down to our last group of picture books for today's presentation, starting with Natalie Portman's Fables. Yes, this is by the Natalie Portman, Academy Award-winning actress, director, producer, and activist. Hopefully some of you heard Natalie and Betsy Bird speak at the ALA virtual conference last month, but in case you missed it, let me tell you a little bit about this project. As with many people, awareness truly hits home with the birth of your own children. Natalie realized that the books given to her for her daughter were different from the ones her son received. And as a believer that storytelling is a way to practice empathy with young listeners and readers, including her own children, of course, Natalie wanted to offer a fresh take on some classic fables. So here we have a modern retelling of the three life lessons found in The Tortoise and the Hare, Country Mouse and City Mouse, and The Three Little Pigs, which now also includes a green earth message. And all readers will also be charmed by these lovely illustrations by debut picture book artist, Jenna Mattia. Sullivan, who's always too loud. Let's be honest, we all know at least one person who tends to be a bit too loud sometimes, or perhaps all the time. Well, Sullivan tends to be loud much of the time as well. His mom and teacher keep trying to help him understand that he can't be loud all the time. Like when his baby sister is sleeping, or when it's another student's turn to present at the share chair. Okay, so maybe he can try to squish his loudness down inside and count to three to distract himself. But when a classmate seems to be missing on the school playground, Sullivan just knows that this is the perfect time to use his loud voice, as demonstrated here. <laughs> the energetic text and bright, fun, cartoonish illustrations are certain to make this a popular read aloud for story time. But of course, be warned, this can and might be a very loud read aloud session. The Trouble with Penguins. When a wandering penguin meets a child roasting marshmallows, the new friendship and treat brings joy and smiles. But when the penguin tries to share his new experience with his penguin pals, things get out of control. The penguins aren't patient, waiting on the one fire and one stick. Soon, every penguin is creating their own campfire. But of course, fire and ice don't mix. So now their ice home is breaking apart, with each penguin literally floating off on their own. Can the penguins balance individual desires with community goals? Of course they can. Debut author Rebecca Gordon Glum has created a quirky teamwork and friendship story that features lots of adorable penguins. Give this to your fans of John Clayson and Oliver Jeffers. Benny's True Colors. Here's a picture book to help with gender conversations. Benny certainly looks like a bat. He has a brown furry body, webbed wings, and pointed ears. But Benny doesn't feel like a bat. He'd rather be out in the sunshine, not in the dark and he thinks eating bugs is yucky. Benny just knows that deep down inside, he's really a butterfly, and that maybe if he tries really hard to fly like his butterfly friends and be who he truly wants and feels he is, everyone else will see that Benny truly is a butterfly. This is a great story on the power of self-love and identity and respecting others. The author is a former classroom teacher and the non-binary illustrator also worked on Rainbow, a first book of pride. Life is Art, The Life of Artist Keith Haring. As a young boy, Keith Haring loved to doodle and he knew he wanted to grow up to being an artist. And as a teen, listening to the artist Christo speak, he realized that the public needs art and that art is life and that art is for everyone, not just for those with money or visit art galleries and museums. And what better public venue to reach the masses than the New York City subway platform's blank walls? Keith's first subway chalk drawings and universal messages of racism and drug abuse, unity and love, led him to become one of the most iconic artists of the 20th century. As we all know, his art is everywhere. The text, layout, and Keith Negley's book illustrations really jump out at the reader and complement the art style of Keith Haring himself. And of course, as with all good and any good biographies, the back matter includes both an, both an author and illustrator note and additional resources. And the last book we're presenting today is actually a series. The show how guides are a great way for kids, let's face it, teens and adults, to learn a fun new skill or hobby. Each 80, um, sorry, each 48 page book, uh, pocket sized book features clear and easy to follow instructions and two color step-by-step -step diagrams with three adorable characters, Howie, Todd and Shoshana, offering readers additional tips and encouragement. Each book offers instructions on multiple options for each skill and hobby. So for example, the Friendship Bracelet book covers 10 different types of bracelets, and the Paper Airplane one features 11 different plane models. As noted on the slide, we're launching with four books next month. Uh, two additional titles are coming in November. 
And this is one fun series you'll definitely want to add to your collections. And as I mentioned, this is uh, our fall 2020 preview. I just want everyone, uh, we want to thank you all today. I want everyone to pop back on the screen because I just wanted to mention that we all wanted to thank you so much for being with us today to hear about some of our upcoming favorite fall titles. And of course, to hear from author illustrator Mike Carrada about his YA graphic novel, Flamer. As Melissa mentioned earlier, we recorded today's presentation and we'll soon have it featured on our Mac Kids School and Library website, which is listed here. Also, please feel free to share the link, the presentation and our website with your colleagues. And please be on the lookout for a follow-up email that Melissa will be sending out. She'll include a survey about today's event and some NetGalley widgets for some select titles. Please do take, do, do take a few minutes to complete the survey because we of course appreciate your feedback for future events. And of course, as an incentive, all completed surveys will automatically be entered for um, a chance to win a bundle of free print arts. So from all of us at Mac Kids, we wanted to thank you so much for being here today. Thank you.